Good day to you all. I am Off The World, here to guide you through a fascinating journey. Today we set sail to an enchanting archipelago in Southeast Asia, a land of emerald rice fields, smoldering volcanoes, and over 7,000 islands dotting the aquamarine waters. Yes, you've guessed it right. We're talking about the Philippines, the answer to this week's riddle. This vibrant country represented by the majestic Philippine eagle is a realm of diversity, not just geographically, but also linguistically. Its capital, Manila, is a bustling metropolis, a stark contrast to the serene landscape spread across the rest of the country. But what's more interesting is the country's linguistic richness. Here, people converse in Filipino, which is the national language, and English, widely used in government, education and business. But that's not all. The country is a tapestry of over 170 dialects, each narrating a unique cultural tale. From the chocolate hills of Bohol to the picturesque beaches of Palawan, the Philippines is a canvas of natural beauty. But it's not just the scenic landscapes that make this country intriguing. It's the stories etched in every nook and corner, tales of ancient civilizations, foreign invasions, and the resilient spirit of its people. Over the course of this video, we'll delve into these stories, unearthing the historical treasures that make the Philippines what it is today. But before we embark on this journey, I'd like to take a moment to ask you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring more such content your way, and don't forget to tap the notification bell so you won't miss out on our future updates. We'd also love to hear from you, so drop us a comment and let us know which country you'd like us to explore next in our Nations of the World series. And with that, we've set the stage for our journey back in time. Now let's dive into the rich and diverse past of the Philippines. Our journey begins thousands of years ago with the first known inhabitants of the Philippine archipelago, the Negritos. These hardy individuals are believed to have crossed land bridges from the Asian mainland during the last ice age. As hunter-gatherers, they navigated the harsh terrains and adapted to the tropical climate, setting the stage for the vibrant cultures that would follow. Fast forward a few thousand years and we meet the Austronesians. These seafaring people journeyed from present-day Taiwan around 2,000 years before Christ. Armed with advanced knowledge of agriculture and metallurgy, they brought with them domesticated plants and animals, forever changing the landscape of the islands. From their arrival, the Austronesians developed a complex network of societies, each with its own distinct culture and traditions. They mastered the art of boat building and navigation, creating the balange or the barangay as it's known today, a term also used to refer to the smallest administrative division in the country. The Austronesians divided themselves into barangays, each led by a datu or chief. These early societies were largely egalitarian with everyone contributing to the community. The datus ruled with the consent of the community, a practice which laid the foundation for the democratic ideals seen in the Philippines today. In addition to their political structures, the Austronesians also developed a rich tapestry of cultural expressions. They used the Beibeian script, an ancient writing system, and created intricate weaving and pottery designs, many of which are still used today. These early inhabitants, the Negritos and the Austronesians, with their resilience and ingenuity, laid the foundations of what we now know as Filipino society. They navigated the challenges of their time, creating lasting legacies that have survived to this day. Indeed, the early history of the Philippines is a testament to the enduring spirit of its people. From the first footsteps of the Negritos to the seafaring prowess of the Austronesians, the islands have always been a melting pot of cultures and traditions. These early societies laid the groundwork for the complex cultures that would soon emerge. As we move forward in time, we encounter the age of trade and the arrival of Islam. This is a chapter of intrigue and transformation, a time when the Philippines began to truly interact with the wider world. Imagine, if you will, a bustling harbor, alive with the chatter of merchants and the creaking of wooden ships. These docks became the lifeblood of the islands as they opened up trade routes with the mighty Chinese empire and other Southeast Asian nations. The Philippines was now a part of a larger interconnected world where goods and ideas flowed freely. Silks and ceramics from China, 
Spices from the Maluku Islands and precious metals from the Philippines' own mines all traded hands in these thriving markets. But it wasn't just goods that were exchanged. With trade came the exchange of ideas, of culture and of religion. Enter Islam. Introduced to the Philippines in the 14th century by Arab traders and Islamic missionaries, it quickly gained a foothold in the southern regions. The Sultanates of Sulu and Maguindanao, established during this period, were among the earliest political entities in the Philippines, predating the arrival of the Europeans by a century. Islam brought a new social structure, new laws and a new way of life. It also brought the art of writing, with the Arabic script adapted to the local languages, giving birth to the scripts known today as Jawi and Kirim. This period of the Philippines' history is a testament to the power of trade and cultural exchange. It tells a story of a society in flux, adapting and evolving with each new influence, but it also sets the stage for the next major shift in its history. This period brought significant changes, setting the stage for the next major shift, the arrival of the Europeans. So brace yourselves as we delve deeper into the fascinating tale of the Philippines. Up next, the Spanish era, a time of exploration, conquest and resistance. Stay with us as the story continues to unfold. In the 16th century, an influential catalyst changed the course of history, the Spanish. Picture this. The year is 1521 and a Portuguese explorer by the name of Ferdinand Magellan, sailing under the Spanish flag, sets foot on these tropical islands. This marked the commencement of over three centuries of Spanish colonization. Despite facing an unexpected end at the hands of local chieftain Lapu-Lapu during the Battle of Mactan, the Spanish continued their quest for dominance. In 1565, a crucial date in Philippine history, Miguel López de Legazpi, the first governor-general of the Philippines, spearheaded the establishment of the first Spanish settlement in Cebu. Known for his diplomatic approach, Legazpi played a significant role in expanding Spanish influence through peaceful negotiations with local tribes. His time in office was transformative for the Philippines, leading to the introduction of Christianity, which quickly took root and flourished. Today, the Philippines is recognized as the third largest Catholic country in the world, a testament to the early Spanish missionaries. One of the most significant economic developments during this era was the galleon trade. This wasn't your average trade route. Picture colossal Spanish ships, also known as Manila galleons, navigating across the Pacific Ocean laden with goods from Asia to Mexico and vice versa. This trade route effectively linked the Philippines with the Americas, leading to a period of unprecedented wealth and cultural exchange. However, life under Spanish rule was not all roses. The native population was often subjected to the harsh realities of colonial rule. Revolts were a common occurrence, reflecting the simmering discontent among the Filipinos. The most significant of these was the Cavite Mutiny of 1872, a precursor to the Philippine Revolution. Spanish influence extended to architecture as well. The Baroque churches of the Philippines, now UNESCO World Heritage Sites, are a clear reflection of this impact. These churches, with their intricate designs and imposing facades, echo fusion of Spanish and indigenous architectural styles. The Spanish era was a period of profound transformation. It introduced new ways of life, assimilated foreign ideas, and forever altered the face of the country. In spite, or perhaps because of, the conflict and adaptation, oppression and resistance, the Spanish era left an indelible mark on the Philippines. Despite the turbulent times, by the end of the 19th century, a new era was dawning. But the story of that era is a tale for the next episode. Stay tuned! As the 19th century drew to a close, another change was on the horizon. The Spanish rule in the Philippines had been challenged by the United States, culminating in the Spanish-American War of 1898. This war was a pivotal event, signaling the end of Spanish colonial rule and the beginning of a new era under American administration. The Treaty of Paris, signed in December of that year, sealed the fate of the Philippines. Spain ceded the archipelago to the United States for a sum of $20 million, marking the start of American colonization. It was a period of significant transformation as the Americans introduced their own systems and values into the fabric of Philippine society. One of the most impactful changes was the introduction of the English language. The Americans saw this as a tool for unity and progress, 
a way to bridge the linguistic divides among the diverse Filipino population. And so English was woven into the local vernacular, becoming an integral part of the national identity. The American influence didn't stop at language. They also introduced their system of education, a structure that still underpins the Philippine educational system today. Schools were established across the islands, offering free education to all. This initiative was instrumental in fostering a high literacy rate among Filipinos, a testament to the enduring influence of the American period. But the American rule was not without its challenges. Resentments simmered, rebellions erupted, and the struggle for independence continued. Yet amidst the upheaval, the Philippines was gradually adopting elements of Western culture, shaping its own unique cultural blend. As the echoes of World War II began to reverberate around the globe, the Philippines was about to embark on a new chapter, a chapter that would see it asserting its independence and carving out its own path in the world stage. But that, my friends, is a story for another moment. The year 1946 marked a new beginning for the Philippines. This was the year when the archipelago of over 7,000 islands, steeped in a rich tapestry of cultures, languages and traditions, finally gained independence from the United States. The granting of independence was not merely a political act, it was a symbolic acknowledgement of the nation's resilience and spirit. Following independence, the Philippines established the Third Republic, a democratic government that sought to unify the nation and propel it towards progress. The Third Republic was a period of optimism and hope, a time when the country could finally chart its own course. However, the road to progress was not without its bumps. The Philippines had to grapple with a myriad of challenges, from economic instability to political upheaval. In the midst of these trials, the nation witnessed the rise of several influential figures. These leaders, through their actions and decisions, left an indelible imprint on the country's history. Among them was Ferdinand Marcos, a charismatic leader who held the presidency for over two decades. His reign was marked by economic growth, but also marred by allegations of corruption, human rights abuses, and the imposition of martial law. Marcos's rule ended in 1986 with the People Power Revolution, a peaceful protest movement that demonstrated the power of the Filipino people to effect change. In the years following Marcos's ouster, the Philippines underwent a series of political transformations, each one shaping the nation in a unique way. The country saw the rise of the first female president, Corazon Aquino, who pursued democratic reforms and laid the groundwork for economic recovery. Her successors, each with their distinct leadership styles and policies, continued the nation's journey towards progress and development. Today, the Philippines, with its vibrant democracy and thriving economy, stands as a testament to the resilience and spirit of its people. The nation's history, marked by periods of struggle and triumph, is a reflection of the Filipinos' indomitable will and determination. But the story of the Philippines is far from over. Every day, the nation continues to evolve, shaped by the decisions of its leaders and the actions of its people. The Philippines, with its rich history and diverse culture, continues to carve out its place in the world stage. The journey of the Philippines from its early days as a collection of island communities to its present status as a sovereign nation is a tale of resilience and determination. It's a story of a people who, despite the odds, have managed to build a nation that is uniquely their own. And that brings us to the Philippines we know today. A nation that, through its trials and triumphs, has forged a distinct identity. A country that, despite its challenges, continues to strive for progress and prosperity. Indeed, the story of the Philippines is a testament to the enduring spirit of its people, a narrative that continues to inspire and captivate the world. So what does the Philippines look like today, you might ask? A pulsating nation of over 7,000 islands, each with its own story to tell, its own culture to share. The Philippines is a bustling hub of economic activity. Its capital, Manila, is a city that never sleeps, teeming with life and energy. The country's economy is growing at a steady pace with sectors such as information technology, business process outsourcing and tourism leading the charge. The cultural landscape of the Philippines is as diverse as its geography. The national language, Filipino, is just the tip of the linguistic iceberg with over 170 dialects spoken across the country. Each dialect is a testament to the country's rich and varied history, a blend of influences from its early inhabitants, traders, colonizers, and immigrants. 
The country is famous for its beautiful landscapes and landmarks, from the majestic Mayon volcano with its perfect cone, to the stunning rice terraces of Banawe, carved into the mountains over 2,000 years ago. The Philippines is also home to some of the world's most beautiful beaches, such as those found in Boracay and Palawan. But perhaps what truly sets the Philippines apart is its people. Filipinos are known for their warmth, hospitality and resilience. Despite the challenges they face, Filipinos always manage to wear a smile, their spirit unbroken, their love for music and dance is infectious, their food a gastronomic adventure. The country's symbol, the Philippine Eagle, is a reflection of the Filipino spirit, regal, proud and resilient. Just like the Eagle, the Philippines continues to soar, overcoming challenges and reaching new heights. And there you have it. The Philippines in all its vibrant glory, a country that is constantly evolving yet deeply rooted in its rich history and culture. A country that is as warm and welcoming as its tropical climate. A country that once visited leaves an indelible mark on your heart. The Philippines, truly a gem in the heart of Asia. Now let's delve deeper into Mindanao, the third largest island in the Philippines. This extraordinary island, often dubbed the Land of Promise, showcases the richness of the Philippines' cultural multiplicities, economic energy and historical profundity. Mindanao's ample natural reserves nurture its flourishing agricultural sector while its mineral-rich terrain is a crucial contributor to the national mining industry. However, Mindanao is in its significance. The Philippines is also home to Luzon, the largest island, and Visayas, the second largest. Luzon, country's political and economical epicenter, holds the nation's capital, Manila. Visayas is an archipelago itself within the Philippines, famous for its stunning beaches and vibrant marine life. Yet it's the varied ethnic groups, including the Lumad, Moro and Visayans, with their distinct traditions and across these three islands that make the Philippines genuinely unique. They have sustained a thriving relationship with the land for centuries, their cultural traditions intricately linked with the island's plentiful natural resources. Before we conclude, let's discuss the current government and ruler of the Philippines. The political sphere of the Philippines is also represented by the establishment of Autonomous in Muslim Mindanao, ARMM. This region, the result of the Moro conflict resolution, and the signing of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro reflects not just Mindanao Luzon and Visayas' substantial role in the political fabric of the country. Challenges and efforts coupled with the active participation of the Bangsamoro people in shaping the region's future further highlight this significance. In spite of adversities like conflict and poverty, the three key islands, Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao, remain central players in the national economy, contributing significantly to the country's food supply and drawing international tourists with their awe-inspiring landscapes from the majestic Mount Apo in Mindanao to Luzon's impressive beaches of Visayas. Yet the essence of these islands is not just in their landscapes and politics, they form a vibrant mosaic of traditional cultures in the modern era where heritage is woven into daily life. The saga of the Philippines, embodied in Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao, showcases the rich diversity and relentless spirit of the nation. As we delve deeper into the exploration of the Philippines, we will witness how this land of promise perpetually the narrative. Hence, we invite you to continue on this journey deeper into the heart of this extraordinary nation. As we near the conclusion of our conversation, we turn our eyes to the existing political climate and leadership of the Philippines while also honing in on Mindanao, the country's second largest island. The Philippines governs under the framework of a democratic republic with the president wearing the dual hats of state and government head. The country is ruled as a unitary state, but with the notable exception of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, which enjoys considerable autonomy from the central government. The current helm of the nation, President Rodrigo Duterte, known for his impactful six-year term, shoulders the responsibility of law enforcement, maintaining peace and order, and safeguarding the nation. His policies significantly shape the country's trajectory. The Filipino government operates on a checks and balances system divided into three branches, the executive, 
headed by the President, the Legislative comprising the Senate and the House of Representatives, and the Judicial represented by the Supreme Court. Drawing our attention to Mindanao, we observe President Duterte's administration tackling a range of issues. They encompass invigorating the economy through overseas investment and tourism, boosting infrastructure and rooting out corruption. The spotlight also shines on social reform, including the improvement of healthcare and systems. It's essential to note that the Philippines is a flourishing democracy with its citizens deeply involved in the political process. Elections are dynamic occasions marked by fervent discussions and colorful campaigns. The political terrain is as diverse as the Philippine archipelago with a plethora of political parties representing a wide array of ideologies. These parties mold policy and stimulate national discourse. Like all countries, the Philippines wrestles myriad of challenges. However, it consistently strides forward, driven by the tenacity and spirit of its populace, especially visible in regions like Mindanao. Its government, a mirror of its people, remains committed to tackling these obstacles and steering the nation towards a promising future. And with that, we've arrived at the end of our Through the History and Present Day Affairs of the Philippines with a special spotlight on Mindanao. What a journey it's been! Hasn't it? We've traveled through time, from the earliest inhabitants of the Philippines to the age of trade and Islam through the Spanish era and the American period right up to the present day. We've explored famous landmarks, unraveled the country's symbols and dived into its languages and dialects. Along the way, we've met historical figures and seen what makes the Philippines truly iconic. Now, if you've accompanied me this far, you're either a history buff or you've caught the travel bug. Either way, why not subscribe? There's plenty more to explore in this wide world of ours. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed our journey through the Philippines and do leave a comment on which country you would like to see next. Thank you for joining me off the world on this journey. Until next time, keep exploring.